Hi everybody, it's Diana with StampingWithDi.com. Welcome to my YouTube channel and this week's Teach Me Tuesdays, episode 147. And just like I said yesterday, I wanted to play with the Abigail Rose DSP a little bit more. So that's what we're going to do today. So hopefully um, you love this pack of DSP. If you are new to my channel, let me introduce myself. My name is Diana. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I'm in Santan Valley, Arizona. So welcome to my channel. If you have been here before, welcome back. I just said DSP. So if you are new, DSP stands for Designer Series Paper. So I use a lot of, um, what do you call that? Short forms or whatever for for words. So um, if you if I ever use something that you're you're like, what are you talking about? Make sure you let me know. So I will be watching live with you today, and I'm off to the side in the chat. So if you do have any questions, just please ask them there, and then I can just um, type and answer them. I think you do have to be signed in to your YouTube account in order to um, chat and participate in in the live chat if not you can leave comments below and then youtube lets me know um you know that somebody has left a comment um, maybe a question and then i can go back and answer that so um so for however you're viewing welcome so if you are watching the replay I'm, I'm glad you're here any time of the day okay so i'm going to um flip up my camera so just close your eyes while I quickly um, get that in position I try to go as fast as possible all right good 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 all right let me get that I try not to make it be too bad okay so we are gonna play with the Abigail Rose DSP and this is an awesome um pack of dsp isn't it beautiful all right so this uses vanilla so i always have these so you know i'll reference back to abigail rose and what color it comes from and this is where i'm getting these so on the back of the dsp packs are this um this white kind of um it's not cardboard but it's it's just to support the DSP so I just cut this out and then I have that to refer refer back to they're also listed in the catalog so if you're like oh my gosh I always throw those away don't worry about it it's in the catalog but I just put them on my desk so it's easier for me to reference back to so let me show you this beautiful DSP because this is what we're going to use today so one side has got these beautiful flowers so I'll just try to, to flip them so you can see. So we've got this side and this side. So most of our DSPs are two-sided. Once in a while, there'll be something that's not, like the um, a velvet paper that was only velvety on one side. Like the specialty papers might be not two-sided. All right, so here's this. And then some of them, the die cuts out... Um, pieces as well all right so we have these two we have this one here and this is what i'm going to be using today with the back side now remember we used this back side yesterday and then the last two here are this right here so it is a gorgeous pack of paper. So you can buy the paper by itself. You can buy it in the suite or the collection. Um, but it's been very popular. Sometimes it's not available. So if you're ever placing an order and it won't take the number, but you know it's a catalog item, it probably just means it's not in, in the warehouse. And if stuff's not in the warehouse, Stampin' Up! has turned off the back order um, and just makes it not available till it gets in the warehouse and I know it's frustrating it is frustrating for everybody but at the same time it keeps the cost down because if Stampin' Up! has um, like a hundred things or more right on back order it just makes it 
you know, because then things have to ship later and it, it's just not good. So that's just what they have done. So anyways, all right. So let's go back to this fun little card we're gonna do today. So I'm gonna be using the Cottage Rose. And let's see, what else am I using? I'm also using Stylus Shapes die and the Picture This die. And I'm using the Picture This die a little differently um, than I have in the past. All right, so let's get my, um, whatchamacallit, my pieces. So these are the pieces for the card. Now, this DSP pack uses vanilla and like I mentioned the other day, I don't use vanilla very often. So in fact, when I was making my sample card, I always, um, you know, make things ahead of time and then go, oh, well, when I make this, this again, I want to do this or I want to do that. That's um, just how, how my mind works or whatever. All right, so this uses early espresso as my card base. Then we have this beautiful paper here. So we're gonna do some coloring. All right, so why do I have this piece? Hold on a second. I think that's just what I cut. Yeah, this is just a piece that I cut off. So I'm gonna set that aside. All right, because we just want this one and this one. So I'm gonna do a little coloring with the Stampin' Blend. So let me bring my grid sheets over. It's good to put a grid sheet down because your, your markers will bleed through. If they bleed through, which is a good thing, they'll bleed through whether you use, you know, the, the basic white or the whisper white um, cardstock, the very vanilla, but it definitely bleeds through when you're using the DSP to color. So these are the colors I grabbed for coloring. So we are going to use Parakeet Party Light, Granny Apple Green Dark, Bronze, Sweet Sorbet Light, Daffodil Light, and Pumpkin Light. So you'll notice that I'm, I'm kind of wiggling around. I'm not using the light and the dark that go with each other because when you color on the um, DSP, it's a little bit different than coloring on um, the basic white or the very vanilla. So that's why I've chosen, you know, a light and then something that's kind of goes with it, but it's darker. So it will definitely show a different in the color. And then that's why I chose um, another green but like darker and then that's the same way I did with the daffodil and the pumpkin and I have used before if you use bronze or like even some of the other tone uh, blends with red any of the reds it will give you a little darker um, color of red so this is probably nice and blurry it's trying to it's trying to focus on this my poor my poor um, camera gets so confused. What do you want me to show? All right, so let's start coloring this and stop blabbing. So I'm going to do my light parakeet party first. And we are just going to color, color, color. This is such a beautiful card. This pack of DSP is just amazing. So this card here would be a great one to be doing while you're watching TV, maybe you're binge watching something. Jeff and I started watching She-Hulk and we don't really care for it. So I doubt we finish it. We like Marvel stuff, but sometimes I think they know that they have fans this is just our opinion. And then they just kind of put out whatever, you know, just assuming, oh, they'll watch it because it has the name Marvel on it. But I don't think that's always the case. And I feel bad for the actors because they can only be as good as the script, right? All right, so this is my parakeet as I chitter chatter in the background you either like my chitter chatter or you go please just zip it all right so this again is light parakeet 
and then I would do the same thing down here. Then we're going to take our dark granny apple and then I'm just going to, there's already these lines on the DSP so I'm just going to put my granny apple on those lines and that's going to give me extra dark. Now if you wanted to do this quicker you could just do it in one color and just let these lines visually make it look like it's darker just because those lines are there but I wanted to add you know for real some darker green so that's why I chose the granny apple because it goes very nicely with the parakeet but on this DSP it really emphasizes that shadow all right now when I do the flower we're gonna use light daffodil so I'm just doing these centers so light daffodil and these are like smaller so I'm able to do the one the lighter color on these all of them but when I do the main flower that main rose I will do um, just a couple at a time because I do want to be able to go back and add a little dark and if it sits too long especially on the DSP it's just a little harder to blend and we're not necessarily blending like we would if we were using just plain cardstock okay so now I'm gonna take my light sweet sorbet and we're just going to color all of our flowers with the light sweet sorbet and this is one of the new in colors we have new in colors every year and they last for two years so when we get new in colors coming in I believe it's May we will lose a set of in colors that have been around for two years as one comes in so this sweet sorbet they're on their first year all right so we have our one flower with the sweet sorbet now I'm going to take my bronze if you use the dark sweet sorbet I didn't notice much of a difference that there was a light and a dark just because of because of this paper so that's why I'm just using my bronze and that's going to give me a darker shade of sweet sorbet or any red it just gives that it's more of like a, a natural way of adding dark I don't know if that means that this is on the opposites of the color wheel I don't know isn't that bad I took art in school but I only remember certain things just the fun stuff so see how so it, it gives that rose like a darker look as it you know where you put that bronze so let me do one more flower and then what I'm going to do is I am going to speed up the camera while I color all the other ones just so you don't have to see me color them all so I'm going to do one more regular time and then I'll speed it up so this one's easy because there's no center with the yellow so this is just all light sweet sorbet and you could leave it like that like you wouldn't even have to use the bronze but I kind of like to use the bronze all right so we're just gonna put that bronze so I'm basically just tracing over these lines that are drawn on the stamp or actually it's not a stamp is it on the DSP so there's the second one so again let me show it to you love it 
All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna speed up the camera and I'm gonna color both of these and then we will come back to finish the card. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful, isn't it? All right, so what I wanna do is, I do wanna add a little gel pen. This is just going to pop some of that red. Now I know we don't have a gel pen. I grabbed these off of Amazon. If you are doing my hippest hippo class, you do get a gel pen with that class. And I think I only have two class packets left so you definitely want to make sure you sign up for that I did show those adorable cards the other day I've had some questions if you um, like say you already have the stamp set in the die you know can you get it any other way and no not not for the hippo just because the um, they are no longer available so I have ordered just enough for the class so there's no switching out on that one so I apologize so if you really want to do the class you can always you know you know give away or you know sell your extra set if you want but um, that I'm there's no switching it so I apologize all right so I'm just adding a little white gel pen here and there dots and some lines and it just makes this pop a little bit I don't want to put like too much but I'm more emphasizing what what might be um, what are those things in the center of a flower the stamen or whatever so I like to put some white around there okay so let's finish the card up so we have these pieces and these pieces see look at all of that i told you it would bleed through look at that so yeah so you definitely want to put a grid sheet underneath your work area all right so let's put our greeting now the greeting i'm going to be using from the cottage rose and I'm going to be making it say something that's a little bit different than what the stamps say. All right, so we're going to use early espresso because that's the cardstock that we're using. So we have our best wishes. So I'm just going to put it right in the center here. Best wishes because we're going to die cut this out. So best wishes. Then I want to take my happy birthday and I'm just going to take a post-it note you can use our masking paper too I just have a whole bunch of post-it notes and I'm just covering up the happy because I just want birthday make sure that's good and inked up take this away and now I want birthday stamped here all right so then 
Let's bring our machine over and our picture this. So I want to use the picture this die, and I'm going to use this one here. So let's get our cut and emboss machine. And I'm just going to raise this up a little bit. Boop, boop, boop. All right. So we can see what we're doing. So we want our number one, number two, and then our number three, which is one of the clear plates, because you don't want to cut on the first two I put down here. These are just basically um, to help your sandwich, to help it squish. They are not a cutting surface. It sets it right on there. This is not a cutting surface. All right, so let's put our best birthday wishes. And then I'm just going to stick this on here like that. And let's just put a little bit of tape. And this is just that, um, this, hold on. That's just this, I used it the other day, the post-it, post-it stuff. All right. So let's stick this on here and run it through. As it wiggles all over my table. All right. So then we have this. And I've used these a few times, so I will just put those in the garbage. But you can use that post-it tape several times. Okay, so now we have our best birthday wishes with this cute little shape with that little bit of stitching. So usually when you use these, you just do the whole piece of paper and then you, you know, use those. But it also is a great little die as well. Okay, so then what I also did with the stylus shapes with this one here. And I won't bother doing that on the camera because that one's pretty straightforward. I did this with the sweet sorbet because this is the color um, blends that we use. So I wanted to put that somewhere on the card. So let's bring my card pieces over. All right, I have all these things. All right, so this is gonna go on the inside with this. Oh, this is what this is for. Remember, I was like, what is this piece for? Boop, boop, it's this. All right. Because that, that's the back side. This striped paper is the back side of the flowers. Now, sometimes that will happen and you'll go, oh, those are my two favorite in the whole pack. And sometimes then you have to decide which one you like the most. Sometimes you'll get a pack and you'll go, oh, that's cool. I don't really care for the one side. And it makes it a lot easier when you're using that DSP. All right, so I just, stacked these two this is like one inch and this is one and a quarter just so you have that cute little quarter inch sticking out this is going to go along the edge here but i want this on here first so you will not see this crumb cake this just basically is going to give this some support because i am going to put some ribbon around it so if i were to tie a ribbon around the dsp it's kind of flimsy and it would buckle a little bit so i like to put it i like to put some ds or um, cardstock underneath it so that's what i'm doing so i'm just going to take my green tip glue because it will allow me to have a little wiggle room and this is just gonna go right over top. And I'm just matching my edges up. 
easy easy okay and then we'll put this stripes that's too funny I was like what was this paper but it was the other side all right so this is gonna go in here so I just cover that up so I guess I didn't necessarily need to color that edge but I did all right then trim our tails And now this has got some heft to it. It's nice and stable so that I'm able to put some baker's twine around it. And I'm going to be using this baker's twine, which I think is crumb cake. It's in the multi, there's like a um, assorted pack. And this is the uh, crumb cake out of there. So I want it to go around a couple times. So I'm just gonna loop it and loop it and trim so I usually cut way more than I need but I would rather not have to fight with my ends all right I'm also gonna take my scotch tape you know me and my handy dandy scotch tape so I'm just gonna put this it's just going to keep that baker's twine in place oh hang on a second let me scoot down a little bit I forgot to scoot Bum, bum, bum. Sorry about that. I don't think I did too much that you wouldn't know what I was doing when I was up high. All right, so now we're gonna tie this in a knot. So I'm gonna go one loop, two loops. And then whatever has more length, that's what I actually wrap around the, the bunny ear or whatever you do. Was it the bunny bunny ears when you taught how to tie? Eric was hard to, to get, learn how to tie his shoes. That's just part of, you know, he's, he's autistic, so he's a little harder to teach things. But his grandma and grandpa, Gibbs, were here one year visiting from Illinois. And I'll be darned if grandpa didn't get Eric taught how to tie his shoes. So it's like, mom and dad didn't know anything, but grandpa sure knew how to teach Eric. So that was pretty cool. All right, so now we have this fun little bow up here and I just kind of like, like leave those tails kind of um, hanging because I like that um, kind of wiggly look to them. Then this is gonna go here and all right, I just don't want to get my pieces mixed up. These two are the same size. So let's put this on the inside. I did not stamp anything on the inside of the card because sometimes I like to leave them plain so I have room for a note. I also, a lot of times, most of the times, my cards from my lives i use them for my club girls thank you card you know um and then that way the person receiving the card also can write a note so this already says birthday so you know it's going to be a birthday card but it's beautiful by itself all right so now this is going to go on here but we have all this activity back here going on so I'm gonna use blue dots this is just going to give that a little bit more thickness so it sticks better because the glue dot is kind of faddish so it's going to be the right height so that this cardstock can touch this cardstock And if I just use the seal, I'd have to use quite a bit. And it's flat, seal's pretty flat. So it might not stick as good as the glue dots because they have that ribbon back there. All right, but now this is just flat. So seal is totally fine. So that's gonna go on our card. I love all of these pieces. Now this is gorgeous as it is. This would be just beautiful just like that because it's just gorgeous gorgeous but let's put our greeting on it and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put some seal on the edge of it and I'm basically just gonna lay this right over top 
and it kind of gives me that um it adds a little bit of color to my greeting but it reminds me of you know when you have that um levi jeans or whatever and you had that red thing sticking out of the pocket so we've just got this little little tag on the back so then we're going to put this on with baby dimensionals but it does have to straddle this twine so i'm going to put these glue dots or these dimensionals clear over here so that it will be over here and then these two over here and one here and that should give me plenty of space in here for that baker's twine i also want to put some embellishments on there all right let's see here so see this is going to go down here like that and hopefully that's good and straight birthday best birthday wishes all right i'm going to use the iridescent pearl basic jewels and these are the um goodie for the month of october so if you order 75 before tax and shipping in my store this month then you can choose um these goodies as your thank you gift all right so let's see now these come from me so um don't try to enter them you know with your order because it's just something that i'm doing not stamping up so you'll just confuse the computer if you're trying to or the ordering system <laughs> if you're trying to get a free pack of the pearl basic jewels that's just something that comes from me all right so i'm just going to start adding these little beautiful they are just a gorgeous little pearl so one two three four five I think that's good we don't need tons of them but isn't that so pretty all right let me stick this in here now I did not decorate my envelope so what I could do is because this was my play piece so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this play piece and we're gonna stick it back here so this is um, off script so this was not planned all right, so I'm going to make it be the one that is not colored. So this was me playing. So I always like kind of play with my colors, see what I like, you know, what works, what doesn't work. All right, so we're going to put this back here. And I'm not going to color it that way if it gets, hopefully it doesn't get wet in the mail. But this way, it's just going to be plain so i'm just sticking my green tip glue this goes along the edge so this is another way i decorate my envelope sometimes i stamped on the envelope the other day this is just using the dsp so get that all on there really really good then all you do is flip it over and just use the envelope as your guide to trim off that DSP and then your envelope matches your card so that was a perfect size so now we have this beautiful isn't that gorgeous isn't that gorgeous oh all right so here's the beautiful card and it's matching envelope so definitely don't hoard your dsp and i am the worst let me turn my phone so i can say see you later alligator um i am the worst about hoarding dsp i truly am because i swear it'll come to the end of the catalog year and i'll have stacks of dsp that i was like oh i don't want to cut it you know whatever whatever but use it up it is you ordered it to use it but this is a great use for that DSP and it makes the envelopes look that was so easy right so easy so even if you sit and um, color you have the TV going on decorate those envelopes glue those flaps with all that pretty DSP I don't even care if the flap matches the card just make that envelope beautiful all right so I'm gonna say see you later have a great night uh, thank you for spending some time with me today. Make sure you come back. 
on Friday for my dyes shorts. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so. That way um, you'll know when I upload a video or go live so you don't miss anything. And, um, but I think I have blabbed enough for the day. So, so thanks so much for joining me. I will see you Friday again for my dye shorts, three o'clock, Arizona time, same time, same channel. Thanks again, everybody. See you soon. Bye for now.